today we'll be looking at a 9th generation Honda Civic Si. Don't forget to check the video description, I'll have links to everything that I'm using, and if you want to go to different sections of the tune-up, you can click on the links in there as well. Alright, now it's time to jack the vehicle up, and we're going to get the vehicle pretty high because we need to do a lot of work underneath it. So we're going to use a Daytona 3-ton low-profile long-reach jack. This thing is great, gets under low cars, and raises pretty high. So here's the lever to pop the hood. Make sure your emergency brake is on and your manual transmission is in a gear. Right above the Honda symbol in the front, you'll find a latch to open the hood. Make sure to secure it with the bar. And in front of the engine and between the front, if you look down and you use a nice light, you'll see an arrow. And it's not at the edge of the arrow, but you see the gap and then there's a metal piece or metal bar. That's where we'll be jacking the vehicle up in the front. So let's get on the ground so I can show you. But I like to use the Magic Creeper. It's a slidey sort of pad. It makes it easy to move around on the ground when you haven't put the vehicle up on jack stands yet. And so here is the jacking point um, underneath the front of the car. I'll back out just so you can get some perspective here. And we zoom in. You see how it kind of has like a hump and it has some holes in it. And there's me pointing at it with my Braun mechanic light. That's where we're going to jack the car up in the front. And so we're just going to slide the Daytona in. And you kind of have to eyeball it. It's never straightforward on positioning with jacks. But you just sort of eyeball it and try to match it up so it's underneath the jacking point. And the great thing about this jack is it has foot pedals. And if you're strong enough, you can just sort of push down on it and you can raise it up so it's in the perfect position for jacking up your car. I really like that about this Daytona jack. There's tons of other brands out there that do the same thing. So you're gonna put your jack stands behind the wheels and those are the notches or the jacking points. And put both of them on either side and make sure to chalk your wheels. So you've chalked your wheels, emergency brake is on, and the manual transmission car is in a gear. You can use your foot to try to get the vehicle up as far as you can with the pedal, but then you're gonna have to yank on the bar at some point. You see how I've angled my US jack underneath those notches, the jacking points, to be sort of above the valley of the jack. And you see the back is already really low, so we're just gonna get the front of the car on the jack stand, no notches, just on the jack stands. We're going to lower it nice and slow. Whenever we do this, we always check the jacks visually, make sure that they're in the valleys, and we shake. We shake the car, make sure that it, it's stationary, it doesn't move, it needs to sit nicely. Jack there, line it up. You can use the foot pedal on your jack. And then again, put your jack stands in the proper location. And then we jack the vehicle up. Ideally, you have the garage door open if you're working in the garage there. And slide your jack stand in. Again, we're sort of angling it to be right underneath those notches into the valley of the US jacks. And then you lower it. And again, whenever we do this, we always shake the vehicle, okay? It may make some noise as it's settling, but definitely do not get under a vehicle until you have secured it properly. Now this is a Daystar Jack riser, I guess you'd call it. Some people just use hockey pucks, but this thing is nice because it actually sits pretty snug on this Jack. It's the larger of the two sizes, depending on what Jack you buy. And it's not gonna fall off and it has a nice little groove to not damage the vehicle. And now that I can use this Daystar, I can put it under the tow hook, which lines up perfectly. And it gives me an additional five inches on a jack that already gives me something like 22 inches of height. And so as you can see, we're going to get it up to three notches first. And we do the front, we do the back until we get up to six notches all around. And again, I'm just showing you the jacking point on the back and where you put the Daystar to give you the maximum height. I wouldn't go above six notches on any jack, that's just me. At that point, if you really have to get your car that high, you should consider a different alternative like an actual lift. As you can see, these notches are securely in the valleys. 
of our US jack stands, which I think are the best jack stands available. If you're gonna spend money on jacks, get a high quality one, make sure the car's level, and of course, shake all corners, make sure it is stable. Coolant drain and fill. Do this in a well-ventilated area. So we're gonna start the vehicle and we're gonna turn the fan counterclockwise all the way to the left to the off position and the heat all the way to the right clockwise. You can keep the car running for about a minute but then turn it off and make sure the engine is cool before you take the cap off. Use gloves and use a mechanic towel. This is the reservoir which we're going to empty. We can just remove the top. and we're gonna use an evacuator tool. This just quickly gets all of that old fluid out of the reservoir for us, and it allows us to not have to remove the reservoir, which is very difficult to do in this model. Now, if you wanna use a compressor with this evacuator, you can. I'm just showing you the manual method. So this is the Zerx 5050 antifreeze coolant that we'll be using for this vehicle. And there's the max fill line in the reservoir. So we're just gonna use a funnel. I love funnels. And we're just gonna fill up the reservoir to the max line. Now we check, we make sure that our reservoir is at max. So we're good to go on that. We can put the line back in and tighten the cap. And we are done with the reservoir portion. Now we're gonna use this burping tool. And this is a very useful tool. It keeps sort of the whole process cleaner and it's got a lot of different adapters in there for you, but you're just gonna to want to use three pieces for this tool. So this is the plug. It's what allows you to get the burper off after, after you're done. And this is the green seal that we'll be using for this vehicle and the metal cap. So make sure you put the seal side down and we're gonna use the metal cap to keep the seal on. And you can sort of tell where you'll fit it on and then turn it so that it's nice and snug. And finally, you take the burper tool itself and you seat it inside of the green seal. Now you get underneath the vehicle, right underneath that Honda symbol on the front and you're gonna find a hole and this is where the valve is for draining all of the fluid out. So you're gonna see that wing nut, you're gonna to want to manually turn the wing nut, loosen it to the left, or you can go from the top down into the hood if your arms are skinny enough. Mine are not, so I'm gonna to have to do it underneath the vehicle, but you can try it this way too. And you're just gonna loosen that wing nut. So I'm doing it under the vehicle. It's definitely more difficult. You could use a tool to do this as well. Just be careful not to break the plastic wing nut. Once it's loosened, you'll notice the fluid drains out. It does take quite some time, so you're gonna have to be patient. Just make sure you have that catcher underneath. And once it's completely out, you're gonna dispose of all of that old fluid properly at AutoZone. Now you're going to add your 5050 Asian fluid, the Xerox, to the burping tool and you're going to start the vehicle. Once the vehicle's on, turn the fan all the way on, turn the heat all the way on, and do the front and the back. As the car is running, you're gonna see some bubbles coming up. That's the burping mechanism. We're getting all the air out of the coolant system. As we go, it's gonna pull more of the fluid down in, so you have to keep adding fluid as you go. And there we go, another burp. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the fan turns on full blast at least twice before you stop this process. And that ensures that most of the fluid has circulated through the entire radiator system. And you can come inside the vehicle and you can just turn the vehicle off. Then you're gonna use this plug, push it down in to the burping tool and it'll allow you to lift it off without getting fluid everywhere. It's still a little messy, but it, it's much better than not having a burping tool. As you can see, it does plug that fluid. So then you're gonna remove the metal cap and the green seal. And you should have got most of the air out of the radiator at this point. 
so you can put the cap on and tighten it and clean as you go. And as a final step, get back in the car, look at the dashboard and make sure you don't see any warning lights for your coolant. They may be blue or red. You shouldn't see any. And you're done.